welcome back to my channel. It's Cindy from Studio Lou. Today I'm going to continue with the second part of my Immersed series, the letter B. Just a reminder that this series is basically me going through the letters A to Z and choosing an artist whose name begins with that letter and using their work as a way to inspire my own work and also doing a little bit of a summary of their work and their life. So today I'll be talking about Fernando Botero. Um, and the other sort of theme of this series is that I will be using my children as the inspiration for the pieces that I create. So in today's video, I will be focusing on my son and what I've used as a hinge point is the fact that the word moon is in his name. So I really hope you like the video. The artist I'm going to talk about today is Fernando Botero, one of my favorite modern masters. I was lucky enough to take in his exhibition in 2008 at the Delaware Art Museum after being a huge fan for years. Fernando Botero is a Colombian figurative artist and sculptor born in Medellin. His signature style, also known as Botarismo, depicts people and figures in large exaggerated volume, which can represent political criticism or humor depending on the piece. He's considered to be the most recognized and quoted living artist from Latin America, and his art can be found in highly visible places around the world, such as Park Avenue in New York City and the Champs-Élysées in Paris. Self-titled the most Colombian of Colombian artists early on, Botero came to national prominence when he won the first prize at the Salon de Artistas Colombianos in 1958. He began creating sculptures after moving to Paris in 1973, achieving international recognition with exhibitions across the world by the 1990s. His art is collected by many major international museums, corporations, and private collectors. In 2012, he received the International Sculpture Center's Lifetime Achievement and Contemporary Sculpture Award. Fernando Botero was born as the second of three sons of David, and, David Botero and Flora Angulo in 1932. David Botero, a salesman who traveled by horseback, died of a heart attack at 40, when Fernando was only four years old. Botero's mother worked as a seamstress and was destitute. Although isolated from art as presented in museums and other cultural institutes, Botero was influenced by the Baroque style of the colonial churches and the isolated city life in the Andes Mountains of Medellin while growing up. An uncle took a major role in Botero's life, and in 1944, Botero's uncle sent him to a school for matadors for two years. It was quickly evident that Botero was much more interested in art and drawing and painting the bulls than he was ever interested in fighting them. Botero's first works were watercolors of the bulls and the matadors, and they were sold by a man who traded tickets to bullfights. In 1948, Botero was 16 and had his first illustrations published in the Sunday supplement of El Colombiano, one of the most important newspapers in Medellin. Three years later, he had his first time one-man show in Bogota. From 1949 to 1950, Botero worked as a set designer before moving to Bogota in 1951. His first one-man show was held at the Galleria Leo Matisse in Bogota a few months after his arrival. In 1952, Botero traveled with a group of other artists to Barcelona, where he stayed briefly before moving on to Madrid. He passed his days there copying Prado's old masters. He's often talked about how he was a copyist before he was an artist, and that's how he learned to become an artist. In 1953, Botero moved to Paris, where he spent most of his time in the Louvre, studying the work there. He lived in Florence, Italy from 1953 to 54, studying the works of Renaissance masters. This was a re really revolutionary period of time in his life because he'd previously only seen European art through reproductions. While Botero was enrolled in art schools for periods during these early years, he still considers himself to be primarily self-taught. In recent decades, he's lived most of his lifetime in Paris, um, but he spends one month a year in his native city of Medellin. He has more than 50 exhibitions in major cities worldwide, and his work commands selling prices in the millions of dollars. While his work includes still lifes and landscapes, Botero has concentrated on situational portraiture. 
His paintings and sculptures are united by their proportionally exaggerated or fat figures, as he once referred to them. Botero explains his use of these larger people, as they are often called by critics, in the following way. An artist is attracted to certain kinds of form without knowing why. You adopt a position intuitively, only later do you attempt to rationalize or even justify it. Botero's early artistic inspiration came from both Latin America and Europe. The Mexican muralists, as well as the Spanish masters Pablo Picasso and Juan Gris, were among those who first sparked Botero's creative imagination. Not unlike Picasso, whose Cubist breakthrough came after experimenting with the construction of a guitar, Botero had his artistic eureka moment with a mandolin. In 1956, when he was living in Mexico City, Botero painted a mandolin with an unusually tiny sound hole, allowing the instrument to suddenly take on an exaggerated proportion. Thus began the artist's lifelong exploration of volume and modifying the volumes of things. Botero is recognized throughout the world for his singular style, incorporating rotund, whimsical figures and objects which are often suffused with a subtle brand of satire. By manipulating space and perspective, he draws attention to the monumentality of his figures, showing them in spaces that seem too small to contain them. He has remained adamant that he does not paint fat people. What he paints, he insists, is volume and the sensuality of form. He has explored volume and sensuality of form in subjects as diverse as the circus, reinterpretations of old masters, nudes, Latin American street scenes, domestic life, bordellos, and portraits of political figures. Botero has collected and also has donated hundreds of works of art. Between 1990 and 2000, Botero donated more than 300 works, both his own and those by 19th and 20th century European masters, to the Museum of Antioquia in Medellin, as well as to the Banco de la Republica in Bogota. The later collection became the basis for what is now the Botero Museum. In 2004, Botero exhibited a series of 27 drawings and 23 paintings dealing with the violence in Colombia from the drug cartels. He donated the works to the National Museum of Colombia, where they were first exhibited. In 2005, he gained considerable attention for his Abu Ghraib series, which was exhibited first in Europe. He based the work on the reports of United States forces abuses of prisoners at Abu Ghraib prison during the Iraq War. Beginning with an idea he had on a plane journey, he produced more than 85 paintings and 100 drawings in exploring this concept and painting out the poison. The series was exhibited at two U.S. locations in 2007, including Washington, D.C. Botero said he would not sell any of the work, but he would donate it to the museums. There are so many interesting intersections in the career of Fernando Botero. Between 1963 and 64, he attempted to create sculptures due to financial constraints preventing him from working with bronze, a very expensive material. He made his sculptures with acrylic resin and sawdust. However, the material was too porous and he decided to abandon that method. In 1994, he was the target of a failed kidnapping and in 1995, a terrorist group placed a bomb underneath his sculpture, Pajaro, Bird, which he had donated to the city of Medellin. The attack, which took place during a music festival, killed 23 people and injured 200 more. Botero's response was to donate La Paloma de la Paz, the Dove of Peace, to Medellin, a sculpture which is placed alongside the mangled remains of the earlier work. Botero's art can be politically charged. Although Botero has maintained that art should be an oasis, a place of refuge from the hardness of life, his work is at times stridently political. As I mentioned earlier, in the 90s he painted a series focusing on Colombia's drug-related violence. One painting, Death of Pablo Escobar, depicts the Colombian drug baron being gunned down by police. Explaining his response to his country's drug violence in 2000, he stated that the Colombian drama is so out of proportion that today you cannot ignore the violence, the thousands of displaced and dead, the processions of coffins. Against all my principles, I had to paint the violence. 
Botero's sculptures adorn public spaces all around the world, along with the numerous Botero sculptures that can be seen in his native Medellin. Monumental pieces by the artist can be enjoyed on the streets of New York, Paris, Barcelona, Madrid, Jerusalem, Bamberg in Germany, and Yerevan in Armenia. Armenia. A recent major retrospective that started in Beijing and traveled to Shanghai is a testament to the truly international appeal of his work. Botero shows no signs of slowing down either. He's now in his mid-80s, and he's been married for more than 40 years to Sofia Vari, the Greek sculptor and jewelry designer, and he continues to work tirelessly. Demand for his paintings and sculpture remains strong, and recent prices for works by Botero that have sold um, at Christie's attest to still the value that they hold. Um, I find it wonderful to have someone whom I consider a master still alive and creating work. I've always been fascinated with Botero's work and I hope he continues to create for many, many more years. I wanted to share the inspirations that I'll be using for this piece of work I'm going to create. The first is by Botero. It's called El Nino Jesus and it's a picture, I suppose, of the baby Jesus. It's a depiction of a large volume um, baby boy holding a bird and a flower sitting on a pillow that's surrounded by flowers and what I like about this piece is the volume of the body and the shape of the baby boy body um, I will be probably trying to use that in the piece of sculpture that I create and the other is a book that I found the book cover of moon boy by Carolyn Garcia and I really just love the I love everything about this piece the colors and um, I really love the face of the moon boy, especially the nose really appeals to me. So I think I'll be using that kind of shaping. Um, I'm very excited to do a more sculptural depiction of the moon though. So this is what I will be getting started with. So my little moon boy is all baked um, and he is sort of exactly what I was hoping for. So um, I've got basically the head is a moon. It's a moon shape and it's got texture of a moon. I used the little nose from that um, book image that just really kind of inspired me. I gave him a little mouth and my son has a little freckle on his eye so I included that there. Um, this is the hair on top, which looks exactly like my son's hair right now. So um, it got a little tiny bit crispy, but it's fine. It's actually not brittle or anything. It's fine. And then this is the back of the and the top of the head. So you'll see there's like divots and dots and things sort of like the surface of the moon. Um, and I, so I think that the major thing about like Botero that inspires me is just sort of the, the heavier body forms. That's also really like, um, what a baby's body is like. So they're very, uh, big head, big body kind of, um, interesting body shapes. Babies have really cool little bodies that haven't grown into their, their length yet, I guess. So, um, I, I did make the baby a little bit portly here. So he's got these little toes and his little feet and in one of his hands um, I've put a little sort of a little half quarter moon maybe a quarter moon um, and then the other hand is actually shaped like a star so I'm probably going to do something with the color and maybe some sparkle on those I might give the moon a little face I don't know I captured his little belly button in there um, and so the head um, so I kept the the armature inside with the tin foil and wire um, the balloon of course I didn't keep in there um and then basically I hollowed out the inside of the body so like you can bake an entire like Sculpey form but it will take a lot longer to to bake so you should bake Sculpey at 275 degrees um, and for every I think half inch it's about 30 minutes so I baked this one for two hours um, 
when I was sculpting this and, and letting it sit, it at one point something banged into it and knocked the arm off. So I did try to reattach it, but it did get um like Sculpey's notorious for cracking in the oven. So the, the arm just literally fell off exactly where it had gotten cracked. I'd sort of expected it, so I just used Fabri-Tac to um reattach it and you won't notice it at all once I've painted and sanded. So I will get started on colorizing this. I'll probably just do a time lapse uh, while I colorize. So yeah, I'm quite happy with him at this stage. He's making me pretty happy. <laughs> Okay, so here is the final little moon boy. I'm really happy with how he turned out. Um, I think that he embodies everything I was hoping for with the Botero body and the moon head. And I did use this sort of inspiration of the nose from the moon boy book. Um, so he is sculpted out of Sculpey and he has sort of a baby's body and he's holding a little half moon and his hand is a star. This is painted with a pearlescent yellow paint um, and it also has very fine sparkle detail. I'm not sure if it's being picked up on camera in this light but it is um, iridescent sparkles and um, the paint is all pearlescent so I went over the body um, also with a light coating of the same paint so it would kind of make the um, overall finished piece meld together more rather than just having a skin tone and um, I liquid gold leafed the hair so the hair is very shiny it almost looks like it's made from um, like a metal of some kind and um, I sculpted the head to look like a moon and it has some distressing details um, to sort of make the surface look a little more interesting. And yeah, so that's my little moon boy. And I think my son will love him when he's a little bit older and can appreciate him.